What's up, friends? Welcome back. This is part two to the Answering Your Question series. You don't need to watch part one, but you can go back and watch it if you want. This one, we're focusing more on the topics of setting goals for your business and for your life and for yourself. And then also, we're going to give you very practical strategies for work-life balance. That's something that we have learned the hard way, and we want to share with you all of our secrets and tips. So stick around to the end to figure out our number one tips for work-life balance. Setting good goals is so crucially important. And setting goals with your partner is even more important. Because there's no way that we could do any of this without both of us chasing the same goals. We had many in-depth conversations about what the future of this business looked like. You want to make sure that you're both thinking of the same end result. Otherwise, you're going to be chasing two completely different things and you can't walk together while you're going two different directions. So you need to talk a lot about the same goals, the same outcomes, and the same big picture look of the business. And if you disagree with it, have a fight, have a conversation, figure it out, compromise. That's how you're gonna measure success. And if you're not holding yourself accountable to reality, you're gonna get in, caught in this loop of spinning your wheels, but not making any progress. You're doing stuff, you're spending time in your shop, you're making things, you're talking to people, but you're sort of wandering aimlessly instead of, moving towards a common goal. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad used to let me drive the tractor and I would be mowing the grass um, with the tractor and I would zigzag all of my lines. You know, it wasn't nice, smooth, straight lines. My dad kind of got mad at me and he was like, pick something out ahead, like a tree or a stump or something that's in line with where you want to go to cut the grass. Don't look at the grass, look at where you want to go. He wasn't trying to give me a life lesson at the moment. He was actually kind of upset, but that gave me the, the metaphor of, of of in life, pick you out something ahead that you're aiming towards. Don't focus on the here and now. And that's the same thing with running a business is you wanna pick a spot ahead that is where you wanna go and don't really focus on what's happening on the here and now. We go super in depth on this in our My Basement Business program, but if you're running a business, your goals need to be SMART goals, and that's an acronym, you can Google it, but your goal needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely, time-based. You'd get all five of those things right in a goal, and you're gonna have a really good way to measure your success along the way, instead of just a New Year's resolution. A New Year's resolution is much more generalized. I want to be healthier. I want to go to the gym more. I want to be a better person. Like, you can't measure those things, or it's very hard to measure progress, which is why we all abandon our New Year's resolutions. But if you set a good goal with specific steps that outline your progress, that's how you're actually going to build a good business. So being goal oriented has really helped us make a lot of progress when we feel sort of lost in the day to day. Having a goal also helps you say no to things that aren't related to your goal. A lot of y'all have asked us in the DMs on Instagram, how do I say no to a customer when they ask for something that I really just don't want to do? It's really easy. You point to the goal of your business and say, that's not what my business does. Maybe go to my buddy over here who does that kind of work. It, it gives you the ability to say no to the jobs that you don't want to take because they don't fit in line with what goal you're chasing with your business. We had so many of those type of goal setting conversations in this room. This is our old studio. I don't even recognize it anymore. This is now the adventure room. So all of our hiking and camping and outdoorsy stuff is in here. Um, but this was the room where we had most of those conversations about what similar goals will look like for both of our businesses. I remember one time we shut the door and locked ourselves in here until we could figure out what both businesses were gonna look like in 10 years. And those conversations, you gotta put them on the schedule. Nobody wants to do them, but they're so critically important. And writing it down, it's one thing to just have the meeting, but it's another thing to write it all down and say that is the vision for the future of our business. The more that you can do that, the more that you're chasing a crystallized goal, the easier it's gonna to be to take steps towards achieving it. And the last category of things we wanna talk about is how do you specifically separate your work life from your home life? So a couple of questions we got on that subject are, how do you know when to quit for the day? And how do you know when you just need to dig deep and keep going? 
Also, how do you balance your time when your shop is in your home? And look, I'm not gonna lie to you, we've struggled with work-life balance for years. And I would say it didn't even get that bad until the business started spilling out of the garage and into the house, into the living room, into the spare bedrooms, into the kitchen. Because then there was a very large overlap of where we spent our personal time and where we spent our business time. So I guess the tip that helped us personally was to keep those spaces physically separated. Different rooms, different locations, whatever you can do to physically separate the areas. Maybe even hang a curtain so you have to physically walk through a curtain to get to another area where you build your business in your home. Also, get out of the house. That's what really helped us. Instead of staying in for a family night, why don't you go out and take a walk? Maybe explore another part of the city that you haven't been to yet. Date nights were huge for us just to go somewhere and not talk about work. Sometimes we wouldn't even bring our phones. But if you build your business and you do well, you can afford a separate place to go so that you don't have to work out of your home constantly. I can tell you it really did help us a lot when we moved out of this garage and we had a physical place to leave and drive to to go to work. We now have a place that we can come home to after work that is a completely sacred space. We have room for all sorts of stuff in the house now, like my brand new candle making hobby. I have room now for hobbies and I can do other things in this room besides work. And I am having so much fun making candles. But again, we have to keep it very separate because I so badly want to turn my candle making hobby into a business. But I can't do that. I have to keep it a home thing. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get burnt out and it's gonna be the same cycle all over again. One of the best things we've done for ourselves is to give ourselves days off. We're not super good at it and we don't do it very often, but when we do, it is the best decision ever. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the work and your personal life and the never ending to-do list. And then at the end of the month, you realize that you haven't taken a single day off in the last three weeks. So we know we need breaks, but we feel like we're not allowed to take them. So how, how do we manage all that? So we took a look at the few vacations that we did take. How did those get scheduled? How did we make time for those? And what it was is we realized that if we put the vacations or whatever we wanted to do on the calendar before all of the work stuff made it to the calendar, they would happen. But trips would fall through or we'd reschedule if we tried to put them on the calendar after we allowed the business to take up all the space. Because if the business takes up all the space, somehow magically, we never have room to take days off or go on vacations. So to take days off, we schedule any vacations or anything we wanna do probably every two to three months and we schedule them six months in advance before the work calendar has a chance to steal them all away from us. And then once we get closer to the time of the trip, we start scheduling work around the already scheduled vacation. And it is just a lot easier that way. This is a great question because we're still part-time in the military, but I'm gonna make it a more broad question and answer how do you manage multiple responsibilities? A lot of y'all got families, you've got volunteer stuff that you do. I mean, the type of person who wants to start a business is generally successful in a lot of other areas in their life. So it's no surprise that we're all pulled in like 20 different directions. And how do you manage those responsibilities? Well, the easiest responsibility to manage is the one you don't have. So number one, cut out every responsibility that you have that you don't really need to do anymore. Thank you for doing what you did, but it's time for somebody else to, to fill that role. And you can focus on what your business needs from you at that moment. A lot of y'all that are giving up volunteer stuff, it's okay because your business is also a service to the community and to the local economy and everything else. So it's not super selfish. So I, that would be the first piece of advice. Cut out anything that you don't need to do. The next step after you've cut out all the responsibilities that you can is to minimize your involvement in them as much as possible. Again, don't neglect any responsibilities, but if there's any extra stuff you volunteered for, maybe just back off a little bit. And then for the things that you just can't work around, like military schedules or stuff like that, you've really just gotta understand who needs you the most right now. Bob Claggett has a great book called Making Time. I'll link it below the like button. He talks about how managing work-life balance is not trying to balance a seesaw of what's the right amount of time to give to my family, what's the right amount of time to give to my business and getting a perfect balance. It's about being fluid and knowing when your business needs all of your time and when your family needs all of your time or when the military needs all of your time or your day job needs all of your time. Recognizing who can take a back seat at this moment in life, that's the key to time management. 
Perfect way to see this for us is hurricane season. During hurricane season, the military needs us a lot to come in and fly. So we don't schedule a lot of work stuff during the late summer, because that's when hurricane season's at its peak usually. And then in the slower months, in you know November, December, we can really push and make up for it in the holiday rush with our business and family and Air Force life sort of takes a back seat. But working in this tiny garage and from home has really helped us grow and learn as business owners, as people, as a couple. It's really strengthened ourselves and our relationship. And we highly recommend it for those of you that can do it. It's not for everybody, but for those that can pull it off, it's the most rewarding experience that we've ever had. Well, this video has been so much fun to make. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope to do it again sometime. If you're looking for more people in addition to us who are running businesses in their free time, you want their advice, you want to ask them questions to us, dudstack.net. That's how you're going to find more people that are just like you. If you don't even know where to start with running a business, mybasementbusiness.com will get you hooked up there and then you can join the stud stack and then get the refund for the program. Anyway, there's a whole loophole. Get the program, it'll explain it all. See you in the next one. Bye. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Ask me how I